Hello, my front end friends. If you've ever wanted to make a navigation like this one that changes depending on where you are, so you go past a certain point, it switches over to a different color or different styling, and take that idea and maybe tweak it and make it customizable so you could also do something like this where it sort of slides in with this glass morphism look that's very popular these days and then slides back out as you get to the top with only one navigation. We don't need multiple ones in our HTML and we don't even need any JavaScript for this. Well, if that sounds interesting, you wanna know how we can do all of this, you're in the right place. We're going to start by building out this version because it's a little bit simpler. I'm going to take that code, step it up, make it very customizable using custom properties and turn it into something that allows us to do this version here instead. So if all of that sounds good, you're definitely in the right place. But just before we dive into it, I do want to let you know that I have new t-shirts. There's this one that I'm wearing right now, as well as one for grid and another one for color space. So you can show off your love for CSS and let everybody know that you're also a front end friend. If you are interested, there should be a little card thingy on the video right here. And there'll also be underneath the video as well. But what you're really here for is learning how we can do this sticky navigation. And so let's dive right into it and take a look very quickly at the code that uh, we're gonna be starting with here. Very simple, I have a header here, which is where most of our styling is gonna go. It's gonna be as the navigation that we can see uh, right up there. Uh, I have an SVG as my logo. You don't need to have an SVG as your logo, but if you do want it to shift colors like we're gonna be doing, it makes it a lot easier if it is one. If not, you could probably do it with a blending mode or something, um, but using an SVG does make it easier and we'll see how that works when we get to it. Uh, and then I just have my nav here with a UL and all of that. And obviously I also have some styling on here, nothing too fancy. I'm not gonna deep dive it. If you wanna take a look at my styling, there is a link to the finished code in the description. You will notice also that I'm using nesting here. So I just have a few things that are nested. If you're not used to nesting, this is just a UL that is inside of my header. It is modern CSS, which is what we're gonna be playing with today, which is why I felt comfortable doing it for this demo. And right now with everything I have set up, all this is doing is giving us a regular navigation that's just at the top of the page. We want it to stick for first of all. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and I'm just going to paste this in where we're getting a position of sticky with a Z index of a thousand, a background color on it, uh, and a top of zero. So you can see that has all come in. And now because we have the position sticky there, it's working. The Z index here is just because if anything else has a position on it, other than the static, um, it's the sticky stuff often ends up behind it. So this just makes sure it's on my top layer. I've put a big number and the background color I need to have because it's gonna be transparent if not, which means it's kind of awkward. So we can put that back on there. Now this first one we're gonna be doing is when we scroll down, it's going to shift and change colors. So to be able to do that, what we're going to do is I'm going to scroll all the way down to be outside of my selector. We can't be inside of another selector for this to work um, because we're using at keyframes, which have to be on their own. They can't be nested uh, if you're using regular CSS. If you're using a preprocessor, it is not a problem. Uh, and the keyframes here, I'm going to call it sticky nav, just like that. Uh, and the real trick here is we just want to put in these styles that we're going to have at the end of the animation. And so for now, the only thing I'm going to do is put this box shadow on there. We're going to tweak this and change it a little bit more, but just to show you uh, as a quick example of how this works. Uh, normally box shadows aren't something we want to animate. They're not the best for performance, but because it's linked to scroll position, I'm not too worried about the frames per second or anything on this. Um, and then we're going to come back up on the original header up here. And we're going to come and we're going to say animation. And on here, we're going to do our sticky nav, which is the name of our animation. We're going to say that it is linear because we don't want, we want the timing function just to be like from here to here. It's based on scroll position. And we're also then going to say that we want it to be forwards because when the animation is finished, we want it to stay at the end. And if I just do that, because we don't have any timing on here, it's actually already applied, which is, you can see there, there's a box shadow that's on there. Um, and you know what, I was just thinking, this isn't gonna be super obvious with just the shadow because we don't really see it here. So why don't we actually invert things here a little bit? I'm gonna move, um, we have my color here. I'm gonna make this my 100, uh, 900 I should say, to make it white. And then this is gonna go to 100. So we have a dark one there. And what we can also do is invert those two uh, at the end of our animation. So if I bring those down here, make that my one, make that my nine, let's hit save. So you can see it's actually, we're, we're at this point now, we're at the 100% because the animation has just run and that's all that's happening. If I wanted to, I could even come here and say like two seconds, hit save. And if I refresh the page, it starts dark and you can see it switches over after two seconds, but I don't want it to have a time on the animation here. Instead, I want to use animation timeline and I'm going to write in view and it, it 
it's going to work now, but it's not perfect. But as I go down here, we can see if we look up at the top, uh, it's slowly shifting as we move all the way down to the bottom of our page, which isn't what we want. <laughs> we want it to basically stay the same and then all of a sudden shift over a short period of time. So to be able to do that, what we're doing right now is we're doing it all in sort of the steps so you understand how it's working, then we're gonna make it a lot easier and less magic numbery um, as we go through this. But what we're gonna do is after my animation timeline, we're gonna come in with an animation range start, and I'm gonna duplicate that one and do an animation range end here. And these just are for where does the animation start and end. There are ways of passing values into here, but they're kind of backwards and kind of weird. Uh, if you want to know more about this, I have, as I said in the intro, covered animation timeline and scroll stuff in a lot more detail in a previous video that really deep dives all of this. So I'll leave the link to that down below. Um, and I just realized my color on this is terrible. <laughs> it's okay, we'll, we'll get it looking better later. <laughs> this should stand out, not be so dark. I don't know what I did, uh, but that's okay. Um, so animation view timeline uh, is good. So the start, let's just do for now, we're gonna say that it's 100 VH for my viewport height. And let's come here and say 120 viewport height. Um, and what that means is you can see it's shifting in this short period of time right here because it's starting uh, and this starts always an offset. So it basically means once it's at, um, so like here, if I made this 50, let's just say, um, you can see it's already like halfway done. So I want it to be at 100 to be like, we're, we're starting from the top of the page basically. Um, and then it's gonna be finished here. So we have like a 20% scroll range sort of thing um, almost already. It's not quite what I want though, because ideally I'd want it to start switching somewhere like around here once it's already like past this dark hero type area, right? So we'd stay dark, stay dark, stay dark, then switch. So this is where I can feel kind of magic numbery, but I can just boost this number up more and then make this one even bigger. Uh, and now until I've scrolled to about 50% of the way down my page, it's going to stay that. And as soon as I hit that 50% scroll mark, it's gonna start switching and it switches over, uh, we're going from 150 to 180. So it takes us like 30%. So the smaller the difference here, if I do that as 160, it just means that shift is gonna happen much faster when it does make that shift right there. There's a few important things that are happening here. Because uh, I mentioned my logo is changing colors. The reason my logo is changing color is because I have the fill of current color and because, as I said, I used an SVG here. Uh, you can't use the SVG as an image here. It has to be as an inline SVG if you do want to manipulate the fill this way. So just so you know, um, that's an important thing to take into account depending on how you're setting things up. If you have an image, you could probably actually, it depends on your colors and stuff. So I don't wanna say for sure, but you might be able to use like a different uh, blend mode or something to create some interesting effect. Uh, but ideally, if you have an image that's a different color, it'd be kind of weird if it's shifting anyway. So just be careful with, with logo colors, but it's following my current color, which is my text color, and my links are also set to inherent. So that's why I can change it on the parent and everything is sh shifting along with it. But otherwise, it, it's actually working pretty good. Um, the thing that's kind of awkward with it when it does this shift right now, uh, and it, as I said, we're gaining the box shadows coming in. The box shadow animation, I'm not concerned about because it is just based on scroll position. Um, but the thing that's really awkward right now is that we have these sort of magic numbery setups here. And I don't like that they're magic numbery. And I wanna make it easy for people to modify and to change. And what about the colors and everything else that's going on? I want all of that to be actually really easy to be able to handle. So that's where custom properties come into the mix. So what I'd ideally have is animation starts after, and we could say like 500 pixels. So once we've scrolled down 500 pixels, we're going to start our animation. And then we're also gonna come in with a custom property here called animation, and I guess like distance, like how long, maybe we could, if you have a better name for that, let me know. Um, but animation distance, and we'll say 250. So we're gonna scroll 500 pixels down the page, start my animation, and the animation range of scrolling is 250 pixels. The other thing I'm gonna do here, and I'm breaking this off on its own little tangent because people always ask me about it, is I'm gonna make these have an underscore on them just to indicate these aren't things you find up in the like the root. These are locally scoped custom properties, so I'm sort of setting them apart a little bit. Um, this is an idea that Leia Veru had. It's sort of like private properties in JavaScript. There's a little bit more to it than what she was talking about, um, but I just like doing this as a way to delimit if something is a locally scoped property versus if something is 
you know, I go and find it in my root. So that's how I'm setting it up here uh, and just why you'll see me using underscores on them. So how can we use those numbers? Let's come down here and on these, I'm actually gonna use a calc. So we can say calc of 100 v, uh, VH because viewport height and you could use DVH here if you wanted to as well, dynamic viewport height. Um, I think VH is actually very safe to use in this case, but if you wanted the DVH, you could use it as well. And with that, we're gonna say plus uh, 100 VH plus my var. And we're just gonna copy that because it's faster and paste it in. So our animation starts after. And then I'm actually gonna take this one and copy it again and paste it on this line. Let's make this a lot bigger so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, so we're gonna say this plus my var, uh, and this one is my animation distance. So that's just, you know, we're going from this point to that point basically, and this math will work. And if I hit save on that now, we come back to here as I go down, we can see that it's hitting exactly what I asked it to. So we're scrolling down that distance, then it's gonna do the shift and it's gonna go to there. Uh, I'm actually going to make one change here because <laughs> I don't like how it looks. Um, my after color, my background here, I'm gonna make this pure white. Um, and I think that little, that grayed out zone is gonna look a little bit nicer. Uh, and what I like about this now is I could say, okay, after I scroll 900 and I can use pixels here, or I can use viewport units, or I can use whatever I want. And just for fun, I would never do this, but we could say 900 and 900. So that means if I scroll down, we have to go all the way down and then it's a really slow shift. Or we could come in here and make this like 50 pixels here. So now instead of a really long transition, it's gonna be a really short transition when it does happen, right? And that's probably more of what you're after. Uh, and again, this could be set with viewport viewport height. So after we scroll 50 viewport height, which would be about 50% of the way down, then all of a sudden we're gonna get a nice fast transition to having the shadow, whatever you want. You can play around with those numbers. And we can actually make a lot more of this customizable as well if you want to. You don't have to add these all in, but I sort of like having it like this, uh, where I'm also saying my surface color start, surface ends, that's the background colors. And then I can also do the same for my text color start and text color end. And so that just means I need to use those within what I'm doing down below, but it's just adding all of that customization here. So a really quick edit there, I've just switched all of those out to those custom properties. And then at the end of my animation, I've put this here. Um, so we have my color and my background color going to the end values over here. And what I like about that is it means I don't have to come down here and make a change. I'm controlling the entire look of what's happening from here. And I just, the more controls I put as, as custom properties, sort of the more I like it. So we can see that it's still working, except I'm getting uh, very transparent, which wasn't uh, what I was after because I put a low opacity right there. We can fix that um, and play around with my numbers. And there we go, that's looking a little bit better. I fixed my colors up and maybe this can go up to like 120 pixels or something uh, just so our shift is happening. So if you brought this into a project, you could set it all up here uh, and, and everything would be working. Uh, really good. Now, one thing you'll notice here is I'm doing a surface end start and end. I'd find it easier because I can control it all just through here. Uh, there would be a way to do this with a single custom property and you just change the value of the custom property down here instead. I personally like this other method more just because I don't need to go and look for my keyframes after. Everything is just stored right here, but it would be possible. The only thing is you'd also have to register it as with like an app property if you wanted to change the value of the custom property and have it animated. Um, so yeah, if you've never done that, that would just be another thing that you'd have to look into. It's Houdini at property. It's not hard to do, but I just find this, this much easier. And it's also going to help us a little bit with browser support. Um, because if a browser doesn't support this, what are we going to do? <laughs> right? Uh, th there's, uh, there is a polyfill that I haven't experimented with in this. I do know the polyfill is a little bit limited in what it can do. So it would definitely be worth playing with and seeing if the polyfill works. Uh, but what I'm going to suggest is just coming in uh, and you have to decide, do you want it to be a sticky nav or not uh, if browsers don't support this? So right now it's only in Chromium browsers, but it's over 60% support uh, and it's behind a flag in Firefox, I believe. I put links to browser support tables in the bottom. Um, but what you could do is just come right here and you could say that at supports, and this would just be animation timeline of view, and then wrap that entire block. Let's make this bigger so we can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, take this entire thing here and wrap it within the, the at supports. 
And what this means is, uh, you know, is this supported or not? And if the browser does not support this, then it's not going to run through this, but we will have a sticky navigation. That means the color won't actually change. So if I come and take a look in Firefox now, it's just staying as a dark navigation. Everything is working, no broken experience. It just doesn't have that shift going on. Or maybe you don't like that. You want it to be at the end state because you know this only works when it's at the very top. You want it to stay sticky, of course. If <laughs> If you don't even want it to stick, then you just move all of this into here, right? If I do that, then in this one, it's not a sticky nav. It just works the same way it did before. So that's obviously an option. Whereas here, because it is supported, it's working and everything is fine. Uh, or the other option is you actually move this sticky nav linear forwards outside of the supports. And I'm just doing an alt up and down to move code around, um, just in case you didn't know that shortcut in VS Code. And as we saw when we first set this up, what this means is it sees this animation and there's no time on it. So the time is basically zero. So it automatically jumps to the end. And that means we always have the end state. So we always have it like this. And so this is probably gonna be project dependent a little bit and context dependent on what colors you prefer. Do you want it with the light one? I sort of like this with this simple demo that I made here, um, but it really depends on your use case and what you want. Uh, but browser support is still an issue with this, but I think it's one of those things that um, is a, as a progressive enhancement is perfectly fine. And there's different ways that we can progressively enhance it, which is perfect. You can decide on, do you just don't want a sticky nav or do you want it to be the beginning styles or do you want it to always be the end styles? So with that said, let's look at how we can make this even better. <laughs> so for the better version, I'm actually gonna make this a dark theme and I'll see you in just one second. All right, so now we have a dark theme website. You can see my text looks better now. <laughs> As well, the animated sticky nav uh, is sticking out because of the color shift that I did. Uh, the, both the first and second version of this, the finished versions will be linked down below. Um, just in case you want one or the other. Um, and in this case, I don't really want this to happen. We want to get sort of that new trendy glass morphism style instead. So for this, there's a couple of fun little tricks and, and things along the way, and we're going to sort of step it up slowly as we go through all of this. And so for this, uh, to get this started, the first thing I'm going to do is the end color. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make this, uh, we're going to do, I'm trying to think, I think I want it black still. So 5%, but we're going to give it like an opacity. Uh, of 0.2 or something, so it's darker. You know, we, it's there, but it's it's very dark, and my color at the end is going to stay light. And uh, I think we're actually gonna do light here as well. There we go. So we just get like an opacity that's coming through on it, uh, which is going to work better for the effect that we're gonna be after. Now, the real trick here is when I first start scrolling, I want the nav to go off with it, but then when we reach a certain point, I want it to slide in. And that's the trick for here, and the way we're gonna do that is actually coming down here to the top. And I'm gonna show where we're gonna later come on and make a toggle. So this could be like a feature that you could turn on and off if you want. Um, but I'm just gonna come to the top and make it negative five rem. Uh, and the reason for that is before we have any scrolling, it's going to just be where it is in normal flow. And then as I scroll, it will stick, but, and it shows negative five because it's big enough that our element will be off the screen and it's sticking but it's sticking five rem out of our viewport. So we don't actually see it because it's a negative five rem. Just like if I did this at five rem, it's it's sticking, but it's, it's five rem down. So I'm doing the opposite, negative five rem. And if ever like a little bit is sticking out, you can make this a bigger value, kind of magic numbery, but whatever. It's not the end of the world. And it's sticking, but it's sticking just out of our viewport um, as we're scrolling down. And that means if it's sticking here, I can actually change where this top value is. And again, top isn't normally something you'd want to animate, but I'm not after super buttery smooth animations now because it's scroll link position. Um, so I don't think it's not something that's like animating in, in different ways. I think it's okay. We could technically translate it in. Um, so I think using the top here is okay though. So I'm gonna say that my top is now going to be say one rem down. And that means you can see it, it already worked. <laughs> I'm gonna start here and it's there, it goes out, it sticks. And then as I continue going, then it's gonna animate in and slide back in. Except now it doesn't look very good. <laughs> so a couple of other things we're gonna do, let's come back up here. And then I'm also gonna add in, I'm gonna do this within my at supports cause I don't really want this on there unless this is supported, but I'm gonna add a backdrop filter on there cause that gives us a little bit of our glass morphism look uh, that we're after. And I think that looks a lot better. So we'll put in that, um, and again, that's just a backdrop filter, a blur. And then the other thing, let's come back up to here and change this color a little bit, just maybe a 0.05. 
um, would actually be enough opacity. So it just gives us a little bit of a look to it uh, and it blurs out. So I think that's okay. Uh, the other thing is I don't want it to be as wide and I actually want the logo to be gone. And these two things that I'm gonna do now aren't really animatable properties. So we sort of need to trick things a little bit here to pull this one off uh, and to make it look good. And the reason I say that is, and let's, let's only put it here. Um, we'll do the width first, because that one's easier. <laughs> so we're gonna say that the width is fit content. And fit content just means like, go as small as you can go without any line wraps. And if it runs out of room, then it will line wrap. Um, if you want to make sure there's never any line wraps, you could also use max content, but then you would get horizontal overflow. So it depends which one you want. I'm going to go with fit content just because it's slightly safer. And of course I've made this not mobile friendly. Um, you, you know, I'm leaving that one up to you. We're looking at the stickiness right now. Uh, so there we go. That's already looking a little bit better. I guess we could also come up to here and add a border radius on all of this. Um, I'll just do it here. Border border radius of 100 VW, which means it's always going to be a pill shape. So right away, you can see it's here, it's stuck, or it's not stuck, it's sitting there, it scrolls away, and then it comes in. But notice how it does this weird shift right here, where the width is kind of like, here it's okay, but then it it basically instantly goes from its full width, like, let's, I'll, I'll show you, let's make this like 300 or 500 pixels or something really big. So the distance should be long, but it's basically like one, it's instantly wide or instantly narrow. And that's because we can't animate to a fit content, um, right, from auto. So width, uh, can I do this? I don't think I can, no, same idea. We can't go from the width to a fit content to an auto or width 100%. That's not gonna work. So we need to come up with a different way of doing that. Uh, but I also need to hide my logo. So we're gonna do both of those at the same time because it's a very similar thing that we're gonna do. Little wardrobe change, Kevin from the future here. I was watching the my edited version and then realized I did a bit of a contrived solution here and it could be a lot easier. So we're gonna look at the simpler solution uh, that I should have done in the first place uh, for getting the, that problem um, with the sizes and everything uh, to work. So what we're going to do is, let's do the, we'll, as I said, we'll do both at the same time. And what it basically involves is let's find my, where I have my logo set up here, where I just have the fill and I have a height on it because it sort of makes sense for a logo. Uh, I'm gonna do a display on here as well. And my display is going to be a custom property that I'm not gonna have defined, which is going to be a logo display. <laughs> and I'm just gonna do a comma and actually I put none there, but I want block. So what that means is um, my, my logo display is set to block by default because this is an undefined custom property. So just means if the browser can't find a value for that, it's going to use this as the value. And the reason I want to do that is because then I can actually switch it within my animation because we can't, I, I don't want to have to have multiple different animations. I want this one animation to be for everything. And so by having it as a custom property, that makes it a little bit easier. And I don't even need to worry about um, doing this as a registered custom property with like an app property or anything like that, because we're not animating this. It's just going to instantly change, right? We're going from block to none instantly. So that's going to be set there. And we're going to do the same thing for the width where I can come up um, and I don't have a width set anywhere um, on my header right now, but we can do the same thing where on this, we can come up with a width. And this one doesn't technically need to be a custom property because the animation is directly on here. Uh, but it just makes it a little bit more obvious what's happening, I think. So I'm just going to call this one header width and the default will just be auto, which it already is. This is the, the value where what we have right now. Um, and we're going to save that. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to come down here and change them. There is a catch to this though, and we'll see here. Um, and well, we saw that already with the width where it wasn't really working properly, right? Because if we have the uh, when we change, I can change my custom properties here. So if I did the uh, header width and we'll do the logo display as well. Uh, so here I can change this to be my fit content like we were pl just playing with. And then I'm also gonna do my header display and make that none. And that just means that the, whoop, my header display is not working. Oh, not header display, that should be logo display, sorry. And so it's the, that same problem we have where it's like halfway through the animation, we're switching from this to the other one. So instead of doing these here, we're going to do them somewhere else because we can have different keyframes set up. And here I'm going to do a 0%, 100% instead. 
and throw them in there. And that just means that these are going to switch as soon as the animation starts. And why this is going to work is because the animation is starting when our logo is stuck 5rem off the top of the page. So because it's happening off the page, it just seems to slide in and everything is perfectly fine and good. Uh, and there's a few extra things we could do here just to make it a little bit more customizable as well. So if we go all the way back up to here, um, just like I have these set as my custom properties, but what we could do is set uh, things here that would be sort of like settings. So again, we wouldn't have to jump down to the other area down below, right? This is our settings that we want to keep. So I could say uh, logo after animation is it, uh, so we could have it stay block or we could have it go to hidden. And then because we have this here, what we could do is we could come down all the way to inside the animation where I have the none here and I could have that look at that other one. So this would be my logo after animation. Um, or maybe you can come up with a better name for it. And we could do the same thing for the fit content for the width. And you could do the same thing with your border radius and, and other things like that. So you'd sort of pass off all the different things that would end up being down there. Um, and I put hidden here, but we want to have it as none, um, right? So if we do that, it should still work perfectly fine. You can see, there we go. So it's switching over to this, but only in the second half. And I like doing that as much as possible again. So I don't have to look up here for some stuff and then go and find a keyframes animation somewhere else. The more I'm controlling here, the better. So I'd encourage you to play with this a little bit, make it more of your own. You can add some more customization to it. And so if you did enjoy this video and you'd wanna do a bigger deep dive into the different types of things you can do with the animation timeline, and we have a scroll and a view, and there's a lot of different controls and different things we can do with it and really fun effects that we can create without any JavaScript now, which is always very exciting, especially for someone like me. But if you're interested in that, that video is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome, Philip, Andrew, Simon, Tim, and Johnny, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.